is Dr. Bill Deagle, and our panel is John Moore and Ann Morrison. John, are you there? I'm here. Good morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> uh, John, we didn't get a chance to talk earlier, but uh, you're always on top of the latest issues. You have your own show on Republic Radio from 7 to 9 a.m. Monday to Friday with your co-host, Ann Morrison, scientist. And you're a forensic investigator, former Special Forces, and you have your ear to the ground with lots of contacts as to what's really happening behind the scenes. Uh, what are the key issues that are cooking right now? Well, there's something that you and I haven't talked about, Dr. Bill, and, and this uh, trial in Florida with uh, Mr. George Zimmerman. Uh, in all likelihood, he will be exonerated, found innocent of this crime. It is summer. It's hot. Uh, him being found innocent in the heat of the summer, which is almost without a doubt going to happen, uh, the perfect storm would be for him to be found innocent and impeachment charges be filed in the U.S. Congress at the same time against the President of the United States. That would be the perfect storm for a hot summer uh, to get these yeah. cities really burning to the ground. Uh, and of course, yeah. it won't be spontaneous. Uh, as with Rodney King, there was a lot of contrived uh, uh, people being stirred up by uh, for, by professionals who knew what they were doing using the media. And, uh, of course, they didn't have the media in its current state did not exist when Rodney King uh, riots went down 20 years ago. Uh, we have uh, instant communication, and, and uh, I'm very, very concerned that if and when, and it's more likely when, George Zimmerman is found innocent. There's a photograph I'm looking at here, Mr. Zimmerman, uh, when he was taken into custody that night. Uh, he's been really beaten up. Uh, his nose is broken. Uh, his lip is broken and bleeding. Uh, there's, uh, there's some bruising on his forehead where he was hit. Uh, this man was was getting his head, the back of his head, slammed against the concrete by a 17-year-old football player, and he he defended himself uh, successfully. Um, Any time a man is on top of you, trying to smash your head uh, and is smashing your head into the concrete, he's trying to kill you. There's no two ways about it. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's no way, no two ways. In fact, the chances chances of you dying doctor. and yeah, and as a trauma doc, I can tell you, if someone's smashing your head against the concrete, they're planning on killing you. Absolutely. This is not like and, a, and, uh, it's not just I'm going to give you a bloody nose and or break your jaw or whatever. This is I'm going to kill you because a head injury like that will cause a bleed somewhere in the brain and it can be even delayed. Uh, it's very very dangerous and you can get actually a, a brain stem tear from being smacked against the back or a cerebellar injury. Uh, it's just obscene that they actually put this man through this. And of course, the, right. it's the whole this issue is never, we have a, ever should have been anything other than a <clears throat> local matter. We reported in the local news well, one or two days. Right. End of story. Well, all this merit, well the local police didn't even make anything out of it. it, it it's, yeah, what happened is it got blown up because the media wanted to pick it up. And, of course, we have Eric Holder who did Fast and Furious under the Abominator. Uh, that basically is a criminal activity. Both these guys should be impeached and, and, and put in prison for that, that alone, let alone dozens of other things Obama's done. Eric Holder is a criminal. Uh, I mean, it's just unbelievable. And when we have situations like this where Americans are defending themselves, in countries like Switzerland, where they have to, number one, have a gun, have gun training, maintain not only guns, but every male has to have one weekend a month and two weeks a year where they actually go, I think, up to age 65, actually, for on-site uh, military-grade training. They basically have virtually no murders. I mean, gun right. murders just don't occur in Switzerland. It's just well, people say, oh, yeah, guns are kill people. No, they don't. Untrained people who don't know how to handle a gun, and you universally have properly trained people that know how to store their guns. The little kids don't get them. Uh, idiots don't get guns because if people are truly mentally ill, they shouldn't get it. Just like I said before, that kid up in uh, Newton, Connecticut, you take the kid from the gun, not the guns from the kid. You just He shouldn't have been well, in a gun just store. To, just, to, just to piggyback. <laughs> what you're saying yeah. expand on it a bit every um, all virtually all adult males in switzerland between ages 18 and i don't know if it's 60 or 65 it's not yeah, a somewhere in the range in closet. it's a machine gun yeah and Almost they have to have a fully automatic one the country has a machine gun in their home with the ammunition and they have to have 2,000 rounds plus they also have to have mortar did you know they also have to have mortar well you wouldn't have everybody would have mortars you, you would have a specialized team they would have mortars. Yeah, but, they, but everybody has to work in a team where mortar can be used. So that even if you don't have it stored in your home, your team has to have access to that mortar. 
And the reason why they have it is so they can blow bridges and so on. So if there's ever an invasion, they can block Switzerland off from invasion. Well, actually, they got the bridges already loaded with explosives. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Listen, these are these are what I call the the, uh, the Uber preppers, Uber preppers, the uh, Swiss. Say, eh? well, a friend of mine was a Swiss citizen for a while. Was a, he's on duty there with the military, and and when he when he registered his motor vehicle in Switzerland, he got his assignment for his uh, government uh, bunker that he was, and his family were assigned to that they would go to in time of emergency where all their, their food and supplies would be waiting yeah. for them. And it was part of the uh, including nuclear war. Process. Do you know that you right. can't build a home in Switzerland without a nuclear bomb shelter? That's why the homes are a million dollars plus, but they have very low mortgage rates. But they're all designed specifically so that every home in Switzerland has a nuclear shelter and has to have food well, storage. They're, they're doing something right. To have a country in, in the middle of Europe where <clears> there have been the most outrageous wars raging for several centuries now, and not be part of that and to prosper, I think they're doing something right, Dr. Bill. Yeah, in other words, they're staying out of the way, and if it tries to come their way, they block it. Well, there is it's an like, old thing. Uh, if you want to grow rich quickly, figure out a way for Europeans to kill each other more efficiently. Um, but oh, I, I have a lot of respect for the Swiss. Uh, they are they're very bright people, hardworking, productive. They've managed to stay neutral in the middle of the most outrageous, vicious wars. Uh, in Which are all country. created by bankers, of course, right? Absolutely. The bankers create the wars, just like they want us to go to war with China, which would be a natural ally. In fact, if we started democratizing uh, China, we'll go from being a vicious, what I call a predatory uh, capitalist state, to becoming softened by the culture of America. And it would just happen over time, just with social networking and uh, you know cross-border education and so on. For example, most people aren't aware that Z, that's X. I, the current leader of China, went to North Carolina University. He's, an, he's almost like almost an American. And he actually came back and visited a few months before he became appointed as the current leader of China. It would be easy to start making deals with these people and, uh, and back off from putting tons of money into war machines and other things and figure out how we can actually make deals across, you know, with Russia, who is a single, basically, economy based on energy. It, it's stupid. Well, what are we doing this for? And, uh, you know, I know there are elements in these countries that want to invade America, but they don't want to buy it, do it. They want to buy it. That's why, you know, the person, the companies that are buying up more movie theaters than anybody are the Chinese. They want to buy our movie theaters. Well, they did buy They want to buy, Cal. Well, yeah. The Chinese are buying movie theaters like crazy across America. They love movies. Well, I, I'm, I'm a movie buff myself. I don't blame them. Uh, anyway, Doctor, uh, the, the, uh, the George Zimmerman matter is, in my opinion, a clear and present danger. We need to be paying careful attention to it. As the trial yeah. is coming to a conclusion, uh, I, uh, which I don't know when that will be, uh, people need to be monitoring uh, media that caters to uh, the minority populations to uh, determine what's being said, if there's being uh, unrest being stirred up in the minority population. Uh, if you live near yeah. high concentrations of, of folks that were likely to be stirred up, I would advise people to make appropriate precautions. Yeah, I think that the things that I'm worried about most in terms of disrupting civilization that both the globalists and we will be victims of is, uh, number one, <clears throat> I, the airborne plague, which is going to come here. It's just a matter of time as when. If you talk to the, any of the scientists involved in bioweapons, uh, and I was involved with bioweapon, uh, you know, simulations with Operation Top Off and Dark Winter with the federal government back in the late 90s with Reserve Admiral John Hughes. I can tell you straight up that we have a danger of a coronal mass ejection knocking on our power grid, and we have the danger of these banks deciding to do things that crash the derivatives market. I think these are things that they can partially They're manage, but most of it is... Of list also. we got a break, don't we? Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. We'll be back in a second with John Moran Morrison coming back. Welcome back, and we, of course we have Ann in the wings here in a minute. Uh, John's going to stay over to the bottom of the hour. John, I posed a question. Uh, 
even if we were wanted to say that the government wanted to be competent to even preserve government, because they think that continuity of government is going to exist, if you don't prepare for a CME, a major plague, or all the other possibilities, uh, I don't think the government has had enough foresight to realize just hiding in underground shelters and having a bunch of stuff stored there isn't going to necessarily even preserve government. They're not doing things to protect the people or even notify them there's a danger of, say, ultraviolet light or a danger of a CME, or a danger of a nuclear terrorism attack. I mean, I mentioned this to, to Senator Daschle back in October 2001, because I was one of the doctors at Rocky Flats, that you, all I needed was an APC, and I could go through the chain link fence and take some conventional bombs and make the western United States a dead zone. I said, I could do that myself, so under $20,000, APC, could, I know how to make conventional explosives that are very powerful, with just stuff I go literally from the local pharmacy or order online. I said, you need to close down those airports and make sure nobody flies over a small airplane. And he said, you need to properly guard that area because after 9-11, uh, if we assumed it was terrorism, which we know is the government operation done, but all of our nuclear reactors have got 50 to 60 years of, of isotopes. If you really were a terrorist, you wouldn't blow up a bomb, and let's say, it just at a uh, marathon. You'd blow up a bomb. You'd blow up a bomb in a nuclear reactor or a waste depot, like Fukushima Daiichi. And that's the problem well, is our government. Men in Boston were not were not terribly sophisticated in, in what they were doing. No. Obviously. Well, they read the magazine. I guess it was uh, telling them how to make pressure cooker bombs. But they always have uh, FBI and foreign intelligence officers. Uh, their operations with the CIA might be literally handling these guys. They call through Islamic circles. They even the Russians even told them these guys were a danger, and they ignored it. It's like they ignored it on purpose. They say, yeah, yeah, we know these guys are our guys. In other words, it's like the kid that was supposed to blow up a bomb that was given up by the FBI agents up in Portland, Oregon, at the Christmas light ceremony a few years ago, and uh, the dang ass. And there's always, if you, if you know there's a drill, don't be anywhere near the drill, because that's when things go live. Right. So um, exactly. tell us what the key issues you are concerned about in, you know, even give us a ballpark percentage, what you would do for each one. Airborne plague, CME, bank blowout with the Bernanke is going to be leaving the end well, of the year. I mean, there's a whole... The CME EMP issue is a massive one. Uh, it's one of the ideal weapons to subjugate a country and not destroy uh, anything of any consequence. Uh, so that's a that's a real big issue, and, and I I give it a very high. Uh, if they're going to do something, it's probably one of the most uh, likely things for a foreign enemy to do to us. Uh, a regional war in, with Syria uh, running out of control with. Uh, the rest of the Islamic world getting involved and be, and running into a, a World War III situation is right up there with the CME, EMP. And the uh, the third really big issue, of course, uh, is these uh, diseases uh, that could spread uh, airborne uh, out of control fairly rapidly, especially in the hot weather, um, and lead to massive uh, uh, fatalities because it, we're running, what, 50% plus in on uh, MERS, I believe, fatality. Yeah, and that's that's right, oh. and they they found a link. Yeah. They think between that and diabetes. Um, you know, in other words, when people are, are diabetic or pre-diabetic, though, the the MERS will kill people who are diabetic or pre-diabetic quicker. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Well, that's, oh, well. That's, there's I'm a lot of Dr. Bill. Eight percent of the people in this country have diabetes of some kind. Yeah, it's like that. And it's, for every person that's diabetic, there's there's at least one to one and a half other people who don't even know they're diabetic that are. So I think there's something like well, nine or ten fact, million. Haven't they, I was talking to a doctor. Haven't they reduced what's acceptable <clears throat> for blood sugar levels in the last 20 years? Uh, they they have, and they're, and they made it higher. Well, they made it higher. They made it higher, but it hasn't they're fixed higher. it. Uh, the, the rate of diabetes. First off, I consider everybody diabetic has an elevated blood insulin after a meal, not just elevated blood sugar. You can be basically what I call phase one diabetic if your insulin after a meal, half hour, two hours, is abnormally high. Even if and it'll cause dyslipidemia, elevated triglycerides, lower HDL cholesterol, and cause damage to your artery, to your vessel walls because of the cytokines that cause vascular remodeling are activated, and that can so happen. That Years before you ever start spilling sugar, uh, would actually be closer to what percent then? Mm. Seventy-five percent of the population in America, adults over twenty, seventy-five percent of adults over twenty, 
are frankly diabetic, and by the time you reach age 75, 98%. Well, that's just about everybody then, isn't it? <laughs> yep. And so that, that means even if they're not spilling sugar, which we call frank diabetes, they've elevated blood insulins and they get dyslipidemias. And when you take the ones that are, have already got polyneuropathy and dyslipidemia and their blood sugars are out of it, those people, their immune systems, their NK killer cell activity is depressed. So if you actually measure natural killer cells, they succumb to pneumonia, viral infections, uh, and other things that knocks them off real quick. Well, I think uh, the things we're discussing means people need to, to be paying careful and more care, take personal charge of their health and personal responsibility for their health and uh, get away from the uh, pharmaceutical prescription paradigm and uh, get into nutraceuticals. Well, you know, I, I like to call it, I've changed the name of the countries instead of the, uh, the United States of America being a country, we're going to call it a farm. So there's like 186 farms in the, in the world. And this is just a farm where the pharmaceuticals, that's P-H-A-R-M, are farming us. Do you like that? I like that. People can get uh, test strips, urine test strips, and they can monitor their blood sugar. Yeah, the yeah, Eurostix cool. is the best. It's called the, uh, well, I'm sorry, Multistix. The Multistix will measure protein, pH, blood glucose, urine glucose, etc. The Multistix is the best one. You can go to Amazon. And I think 100 sticks is like $29. Uh, it's probably the best price you can get out there, but those are the best. The multi sticks, and they'll okay. measure. Yeah, multi sticks are the best, and they won't run and do other things like the cheaper ones will do. The multi sticks are the ones that the labs use. So if you actually ask a lab tech what do you use, they use multi sticks pretty pretty well exclusively. <clears throat> and they also use them, by the way, in the veterinarian labs. So checking doggies that are turning diabetic or having kidney problems and other things. So multi sticks are the better ones. That sounds like a good so and deal. what? Yeah, and so what are you what are you tracking? What what's happening in in your neck of the woods? Well, I was looking at space this weather that uh, John is talking about. You know, when the Hajj occurs, can you hear me? N next Go month, ahead. yes, we can. Okay. Yeah. The uh, when the MERS when the um, Hajj occurs, that'll be the middle of September until the end of November, and uh, we'll have returning pilgrims and. Uh, who knows how many of them will be bringing back MERS, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. And uh, the, it affects the, the deep lungs, the lower lungs, and also the kidneys. Now, I have a question for you, Dr. Bill. Why aren't they testing the urine on people that, have, that they suspect may have MERS? It, yeah, you won't find the virus there. Uh, you have to do a deep lung aspiration because apparently MERS, because it grows in deep lung, if you do a, a throat swab, it won't pick it up, even if they're growing it in their deep lungs. So you literally have to drop a, 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 a you know a little tube. The best would be to drop something like a, a, a baby feeding tube, you know, one of these little baby ones, and suck or aspirate some fluid from the deep lungs if somebody's coughing, and then you put that in the culture. But if you just do it from the back of the throat, it's almost certainly going to be negative, even if they right. got virus fulminating and causing an alveolar arterial block and respiratory failure. So, in other words, it's damn Dr. useless. Bill, you got to know what tests are useful. We have a break coming up. Thank you, John. Amazing update. Uh, we'll be back in a moment with Ann, and we're going to talk about lots of other things, including space weather, the freak heat in Phoenix, now 119 set. Welcome back. We were talking on the break about another little piece of equipment you can buy through, say, Amazon. You need a little finger oximeter. If, uh, if someone's getting sick with the flu and they're, uh, they walk them 30 feet and their oxygen drops, it means they're desatting, they're crashing. And in fact, we would do that in the office, and if they're desatted, say, from their mid-80s to, to 60s, they were sent in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the hospital at the very minimum for observation, and if they desatted into the 50s, they were put on a ventilator, uh, which means they're pretty, basically put in an artificial coma and ventilated unconscious. Uh, and if they deteriorated even further, they had their alveolar arterial block, they were put on ECMO, which is heart-lung bypass, so they don't die from hypoxia. Um, most people don't realize that that's a very simple test. It's extremely reliable. And even before people, quote, demonstrate other symptoms, the virus only grows in the deep parts of the lung with the MERS. So even if they don't, if they have high fever and they're not acting short of breath, if you walk them 30 feet and they desat, they're going into hospital and they need a deep lung aspiration because the back of the throat will not pick up the virus. You have to do a deep aspiration under bronchoscopy or drop a child's feeding tube into the trachea uh, to aspirate down into the uh, major bronchi. You're not going to pick up the virus. Interesting, eh? 
That is very interesting because I have one of those, and uh, but I was never They're told to walk 30 feet with it on. Yeah, that's the only way to tell if you're going to desat because you'll see people walking around and they'll people will kind of judge and balance themselves because they know when they start desatting they don't feel right. So uh, if they're having problems with desatting, you're going to see them move real slowly and they move deliberately and say, well, they look pretty good. But you get them to walk at a reasonable pace they, with a nurse down the hall and all of a sudden their oxygen drops from 86 to 56, you got a problem, Houston. They're going to crash on you. Yeah. And if they get uh, hypoxic enough, they'll start showing cardiac arrhythmia, and then they can in cardiac arrest. Well, I think that's a very helpful hand, and I hope everybody, every listener has written it down and will remember Yeah, and they're really cheap, too. You can buy one for like 20 30 bucks. They're really not expensive at all. You get a good one for a little more than that, maybe 50 to 100 But, you know, a basic one, if you go to Amazon and you want to get a, a finger oximeter, in fact, I can just go to Amazon right now and say, finger oximeter. On Amazon and see what they show. And here, twenty bucks. Finger oximeter pulse blue. Finger oximeter thirty six ninety five. So, yeah, you know, yeah. These things are. And you get fancy ones for you know sixty bucks. Uh, you know if you want, but the average is around thirty twenty to thirty dollars. Yeah. Pretty good, hey. Yeah, pretty good. And then say again the the strips that we want to get. Yeah, uh, you want to get the multi sticks. M U L T I S T I X. Multi sticks. Okay. Those are very useful, by the way, because if you're exposed to radionuclides, one of the first things that's going to happen the cesium is going to hit your glomeruli and start spilling protein because you get what we call cerebral renal syndrome, where if you go beyond the dosage, it's going to wipe out your white cells, which you have to do reverse protection. The next thing is hits your brain, it causes edema, hits your glomeruli, and you start spilling protein. Uh, so, yeah, we're already being dosed down, by the way, in the Northern Hemisphere with tons of radioisotopes, so we're already weakened, so when a plague hits, it's an already weakened population, so I think when it hits, which I expect to be later this fall or next year, we're going to have a major disaster, because they're, they're already planning on blowing out the derivatives market, and they want to establish a new financial order, that's why the national ID is tied to this immigration bill. The immigration bill has nothing to do with immigration. People need to get that. There's no need for an immigration bill. What we need is hire more people to do the legal immigration properly. And if people don't want to sign up to become legal immigrants, you deport them. It's real simple. Uh, you don't need new bills. And you also need to have fast tracking when you have these new employees. So if you need people for high-tech industries, you bring them in from China, India, wherever they are. And uh, people that are criminals with a background check. You have enough staff there to do it that have even served one term of service in the military, but they're now running drugs up in Los Angeles or Phoenix. You get them out of the country. You deport them. So uh, they do this because the national ID, a biometric ID, is tied directly to this so-called immigration bill. Lurking in this 1,200-plus pages is evil. It is the precursor for the mark of the beast biometric world total control system, and it's not just for America. America is the country from which the, the entire world will be subjugated to biometric world currency. Because 90 plus percent of the world currency is in U.S. dollars, either virtual or real. And when Russia and China want to make a deal, <clears throat> even though they're, they're standing up to America now to stop Syria from falling, uh, they want to make a deal, but they, want, they can't let them move further, so they can't lose face. But the real issue is that, that with the, as it says in the Bible, this is the final world empire, and it's forming. Uh, your comments, uh, Anne. Well, I really wanted to go back to the MERS um, virus and get your opinion on something, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, no, okay. not at all. I would this switch is, gears. This was... Just like a race car driver, I can switch gears. <laughs> <laughs> you are good. <laughs> no problem. Okay, this, uh, is, uh, this is from Daniel Lucy, and he, he, he's a, a professor at Georgetown University. Uh, edu- <laughs> Georgetown University. Okay. Right. Uh, d- diseases such as type 2 diabetes that are characterized by dysregulation of the DPP4, which is, and right. that happens to be a functional receptor for the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus. So that, right. that increases the risk of symptomatic infection and severe disease because of, right. because of the fact that it's, it's a uh, that it's got that, that DPP4 is not handled properly in the in the, the people that have type 2 diabetes. Now, medications that are DPP4 inhibitors and licensed for treatment of type 2 diabetes may indirectly decrease the risk of symptomatic infection and severe di- disease. So, doesn't that 
Well, now, he says in diabetics, but wouldn't that occur to everybody that's got a blood sugar problem? In other words, what you said, uh, 80% of the population? Yes, yeah. Yeah, or anybody has any other reason for a decreased immune system. Extreme stress, demineralization, hypothyroidism, uh, you know, basically a premature babies, the elderly, anybody with a depressed natural killer cell activity. Anybody with any uh-huh. intercurrent autoimmune disease or cancer, anybody fragile where they're not digesting their food because their digestive enzymes are gone because they're recovering from chemotherapy, radiation, or they're elderly, all those people are first to be knocked off by a plague. <clears throat> okay, but how do we get a hold of a medication that are uh, DPP-4 inhibitors? Uh, DPP-4 is the uh, inflammatory cytokine, right? Um, well, it says it, it's characterized by dysregulation of the DPP-4, CD26, yes. a functional receptor. Yeah, what you want to do is you want to take, number one, uh, the Allergon and uh, high-dose power C. These are all cytokine storm activities. When yeah. people die, even if they're diabetic, it's a cytokine release. So if you take 30 to 60 gram of clones a day of power C and one power full vitamin K2 and then Allergon, which is diamine oxidase, it gets rid of histamine and also the fulcrum cytokines called interleukine 1 beta. The IL-1 beta is like a center point before it branches off and produces tumor necrosis factor alpha, IL-2, 6, et cetera. And if you take Allergon and the high-dose power C, and then you take antipathogenics to prevent any infection from spreading or seeding because you need an inoculum or enough bugs. Uh, the silver 100 is the most powerful silver. Neutrodine, diatomic iodine, Edgar Casey iodine, Alimax, Alimed, and my new formula called Allison Med, we formulated from a, a source in Germany. And then immunoglobulins. You want to give immunoglobulins because uh, anybody that has immune deficiency that has lactoferrin, colostrum, and immunoglobulins that help coat your GI tract and your respiratory tract. Because people that get sick, they don't have immunoglobulins to protect them as a first line of defense. And if you give Immunomax or Nutrimmune capsules, you give them that extra protection, which is, by the way, head-to-head studies equivalent to IVIG, which is intravenous immunoglobulins, which, if you take it, per year will cost you a quarter million dollars a year, but this costs you a tiny fraction of that to take the immunoglobulins. But it's the same uh, benefit if you take our Immunomax, and we have the only source of pharmaceutical-grade immunoglobulins in the world. So uh, you can take it by most Immunomax powder, uh, and you can take it also uh, as the Nutrimmune capsules. Okay. Well, then that sounds like we've got a way to uh, fight them. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and then if you have also the, the defense wipes, which kill all capsulated viruses uh, on contact and are biodegradable, if you've got a NIOSH N95 mask, I don't recommend the 100s because they're too hard to breathe in. Um, and you want to use an IOS 95 mask, and after you've used it for a day, you want to chuck it. You can use it That's 200 right. hours. That's right, and the, and the CDC only says to use them for 15 minutes. Yeah, but you can actually use it for a full day. And actually, to be honest with you, you can use them 200 hours as long as you you don't you know, contact the inside of the mask and contaminate it. Welcome back, and uh, by the way, all hours of the show are, uh, are open to open lines, but we do screen calls, and uh, we don't want crazy comments, and we don't want uh, things that are off topic. But uh, we have a lot of things going on. I want to touch on some of the things on Drudge for a second and really get things kind of stirred up. Okay. Federal judge uh, orders state to order, offer benefits to gay partners. First off, um, we need to dissect this issue. You can't define something as to what it isn't. Uh, firstly, defense of marriage is there's no business of the federal Supreme Court saying that the Defense of Marriage Act isn't rational. Number two, though, is that all gay couples should be able to have right of inheritorship, benefits, and all those other things so they don't have to adopt each other. There's actually a paper up here on, on Drudge talking about their, somebody had to adopt their partner so they wouldn't end up with estate taxes. That's stupid. But you don't want gay couples genetically engineering the next generation of human beings in a laboratory growing a fetus that's genetically engineered, maybe even has genes from animals or God knows what. You want to have normal reproduction with normal couples. Uh, a lot of them are, of course, nowadays 20% of couples are functionally sterile. Most people know that, 20 to 25%, because of all the crap we put in our food, uh, they're dropping the sperm count, the increase in xenoestrogen, et cetera. So uh, what I'm very concerned about 
is that we want to make sure that benefits happen for people because they're fellow Americans and need to be treated with respect. But you can't make a family normal biologically with two men or two women. As soon as you start making that technically possible, because you can literally take skin cells and make stem cells. And the, uh, the rabbis in Israel in the last 10 years actually have met and actually made a decision. They support gay couples making clones of themselves and passing on their assets to their clone. Now, you know, this may sound like Star Wars and it's not really going to happen, but guess what? We're in the 21st century, and science is moving far faster than our morality and our common sense. And the problem is that uh, we may have, literally within 50 years, hundreds of subspecies of human beings. And that we may have a drone class where much of the human population is vastly reduced because of the pollution wars or genetic edicts by government now that's decided that wild reproduction may no longer be tolerated because of one or another stupid reason, including CO2, that human beings are destroying the planet and we need to preserve Mother Earth. Well, you preserve Mother Earth by not polluting, by releasing tier one science like tokamak fusion reactors, safe plasma energy distribution systems, and non-toxic, non you know, you know, dirty electricity like from the so-called green energy. But we don't see any of that rationality. But we don't have leaders. Most of the people that lead don't have the brains to get themselves out of the trouble they get themselves into. And they try to lie to us uh, that they are like the late night TV host who presents himself as our president. He might be good against Conan O'Brien, but he shouldn't operate anything including an ice cream shop on the beach. It's just obscene, these people. And, and when they do start to push back, because you can see a little bit of Obama pushing back, he really doesn't want to go to war with Syria because he knows it's catastrophic. So he, I, there's a little faint shadow that in the last few years of his second term as a president, he's really getting pissed that the guys are pushing him to do stuff that's even stupider or more evil than his natural proclivities would make him be willing to do. Your comments, Anne. Well, I was uh, surprised that uh, the oil industry got to him and the, and the carbon uh, when he gave his cl um, climate change report. He says we're going after the coal-fired power plants. And, uh, that's, yeah, yeah, uh, it is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. We had coal-fired power plants with clean coal from Wyoming. And, all, and, I, and I was the one taking care of the coal-fired power plants and the employers there, and they had scrubbers. And what came out of the top was fluffy white clouds. There was not a drop of sulfur dioxide. There was no heavy metals. There were no chemicals. It was fluffy white clouds of vapor. People don't understand coal. If you get high-quality anthracite coal like we have in America, you can burn it clean. It doesn't do anything. CO2 is good. It's a good gas because it can turn it into oxygen because plants turn it back into oxygen. In fact, if you want to re-green the plant and counteract the effect of pollution now we're destroying the planet, you don't cut CO2. In fact, that's the wrong-headed thing because... If you cut CO2, you run the risk in the 21st century, if you have that policy, you reach what I call maximum or peak oxygen. So if you don't pump out enough CO2, in fact, the very fact that we've been putting out CO2 may delay the level where oxygen drops to the point where people are gasping for breath at sea level and that people at four or 5,000 feet can't live there. And forest fires will leave charcoal because the fires won't burn completely. And people say, Dr. Deagle, that's not true. I said, you can go to Sao Paulo, Brazil, and other cities. There are 20, 30 million. And the oxygen in, the, in those cities is down to 11 to 14 percent already, yep. which causes a cerebral, uh, a functional cerebral, uh, <laughs> Their frontal lobes stop working, let's put it that way. It's like having a lobotomy. They have what I call a hypoxic lobotomy. It's the same, same thing that gets a gunshot wound or a stab wound and they're bleeding out. And when they're bleeding out, they get violent because their frontal lobes, their executive function is gone. So they might try to stab you, bite you, kick you, even though they're dying. And you're trying to grab them and, and stop the bleeding and put pressure on it and get them into the vascular unit. And you want to, you know, suture down the, the wounds or cauterize it or whatever. And they're going to fight like crazy because they're dying. So yeah. when, your front, when your frontal lobes don't work because you're hypoxic, you do drug crime things. You act like a zombie. So when they have this movie, World War Z, most people knew though this stupid movie is basically uh, trying to tell people we're not really don't like the zombies. We don't like the patriots. And they're actually the target. Uh, did you see the movie yet? No, I didn't see it yet. I, read, I, I didn't see it yet, but I read the book, and it's really quite crazy. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> Brad Pitt and his crazy United Nations wife who lopped off her breast based on a genetic test, which is stupid because genes don't determine the disease. Your toxin levels and which genes you switch on based on your diet determine whether you're going to get cancer or diabetes. You don't go and take the uh, BRAC2 panel test and say, oh, my gosh, you better take off the breast because then I could get breast cancer. 
But these people, you see, they push agendas like World War Z because the zombies, as far as they're concerned, that's why they have these zombie drills. The zombies are us. Where are the zombies? I think so. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I agree with you. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think it's like yeah. having a, a prefrontal uh, lobotomy. Well, well, what they're doing is they're doing what's called predictive programming. You'll hear lots of experts and high-level masons. Uh, <clears throat> I did a uh, intervention with Bill Schneblin back uh, oh 1999. That's be 14 years ago, and he was a 93rd degree mason at, at one previous time. He's a high-level really solid messianic christian now he was a jew he went through all these masonic orders and so i understand masonry at a level far beyond probably any other person you're going to hear on this or any other show or network anywhere on the planet and people have no idea exactly what they're dealing with it's so damned evil the average person can't even conceive that that could exist and they, they don't understand that they're dealing with advanced transdimensional intelligence that these beings are very real in the in the spiritual and the physical dimension and in the thought or or cybernetic dimension of your mind and they're not imaginary they're very real and we here on earth are subjugated to these monsters and one of the ones they're pushing for 2016 is hillary clinton who i consider and have met personally is the most evil person i've ever met on the planet and i think she trumps obama i think she trumps obama hmm. She's scary. She's so scary. I got in her presence at Dakota Ridge High School in 19 and 2000 after the 1999 uh, uh, oh, uh, thing where they, they called my high school where the kids got shot because they took care of the first kid. And we met yeah. for two and a half hours with Hillary and Bill. And you know, Bill's the kind of guy you go to out with a six pack and go fishing. And of course, you know, yeah. he's slimy, so he'll do stuff. But. Hillary is like going into a black hole. It was like meeting her was like literally visiting uh, Lilith, the, da- the devil's daughter. It was like scary business. You, your whole skin would crawl in her presence. And, and you know, I've dealt with what I call forensic cases of violent criminals where they're chained to the neck, arms, and legs with guys with shotguns aimed at the person, literally ready to pounce on them if they, when I'm examining them, if they're trying to see if they can wrap the chains around your neck and kill you before you leave the room. And uh, she is a thousand times more evil. Maybe she has digital scary. dementia. <laughs> have you heard of digital, yeah, digital dementia? dementia? Yeah, I have. No, I, I'll tell you what she has. Because uh, uh, I would get a gift that God gave me when I had my near-death experience at, at birth in eight and a half. And uh, when I got in her presence, I could see in the spiritual realm, which I can't see all the time, uh, that she had a large, uh, if you want to call it, mega demon. You know, without getting into specific details that was uh, quite aware that I was able to see it too and uh, she just lurched and pulled her hand back when she realized it was like holding the hand of death when I when I held her hand it was like scary uh, she's very intelligent don't underestimate her intelligence very deadly and she completely lacks any normal human compassion that's why when uh, Muammar Gaddafi got his own and the steel rod was shoved up him after he was sodomized she, she was like you should see her her moves is like, oh, this is scary. I've seen the two faced demon there. in people. Yeah, well, some people you see are not as intuitive as me, and they can sometimes see, of course, the slit eyes and the other things, which you know, um, uh, David Ike talks about because people are and don't see it into the spiritual realm, but those of us, there's a percentage of us that can see that more of the time. Uh, we know that there's a parallel dimension, a spiritual dimension that's very real. And here all the time, and only those who are very intuitive see it. Believe me, Hillary Clinton, 2016, oh my God. We need to get our act together and get somebody like Rand Paul as president. God help us if it's Hillary. 